all my videos are in stereoscopic 3D and this causes huge problems with YouTube's new player. Click the first link in the description. This is going to open a flash version of the YouTube player which fully supports my videos. If you don't plan on watching in 3D or if you're using Mac or mobile then click the second link in the description. That will open a 2D daily motion version all of this right. video. This is looking ready to run. So let's get to it, shall we? Um, today we're gonna do something that's probably very much overdue for my part, and uh, it's to take a look at Project Cars, uh, one of the newer um, racing simulations. And uh, some people would probably ask me, knowing that I am a racing sim enthusiast, what took you so long? Uh, to be honest with you, the only reason it's taken me so long is that I've been satisfied with iRacing. Uh, not, I, I don't want to be a fanboy here and, and claim that it's superior or anything, and I can understand that it has a it's pretty expensive pricing model because it's subscription-based, uh, but I, I just, I've been satisfied with it. What can I say? I mean, I, I load it, I do some lapping, and I enjoy myself. So. Um, Project Cars sort of had to go on sale for me to buy it. That's pretty much it. And that's what happened yesterday. Uh, it's the Steam Christmas sale 2015, something like that. And uh, got myself a copy finally. And we're gonna be taking a look at this rather pretty simulator. Uh, so uh, there we go. I got the trailer playing in the Oculus Rift DK2 here. And I gotta make uh, a, a positive note right away. And it's the fact that this simulator is actually almost ideal for my room setup. Uh, if you watched the Euro Truck Sim video, uh, you saw me talk about the fact that the workstation running the game right now is behind me. And uh, the keyboard and the mouse is all behind me. Over here I have a mouse, but that's all I got. I only have the Oculus Rift, the GT, uh, driving for the Driving Force GT, and my motion tracker, got my microphone to my right, and the camera over there, and that's it. There's no workstation on, on this table. So, uh, it's annoying when a simulator will require you to use the keyboard all the time. I tend to remap my uh, steering wheel buttons with a profiler in order to take care of that. But this one, uh, look, not only is it outputting in 2D, the menu on my desktop right now, and a 2D version in the Oculus Rift that sort of looks like a floating theater screen, um, but it automatically mapped my steering wheel's controller buttons because the sort of sub controller like a d-pad and the normal you know uh, the XO square triangle buttons they're all there right and uh, if I press that it actually reacts to it and I can actually use the arrows to navigate in the menu so that's pretty cool I can actually set up the configuration from the workstation and then get, hop onto the seat and start the session using the menu I don't have to like run to the seat because the session is starting because you have to start it from the PC right I can actually do it comfortably and everything so uh let's get to this that is my first positive note and i'll make another note uh this is another game that does the mirror image right uh euro truck simulator fly inside fsx and now project cars are uh games that i can run and capture in stereoscopic 3d however when you're on the menu screen it outputs in 2d and then when you end up in the driving simulation, it outputs a 3D image on your monitor. It's full side-by-side, -side, 960 by 1080. So it's two 960 by 1080 frames next to each other. Uh, careful people who use half side-by-side -side with their monitors, that content is not half side-by-side. -side. It is full side-by-side. -side. So it's going to look all stretched if you use a 3D screen to view that directly. I actually letterbox that stuff in my videos, and that's why it works uh, much better with a screen. So, uh, oh yeah, and there's one downside about that. While you're driving, the overlay, all the overlays are 2D. They're actually full screen 2D. So that's a problem right there, but I'll be able to work around it. I actually did a test capture so far. I looked at the video and I was like, okay, I can, I can pretty much deal with that. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna go do a time trial so I can talk about the simulation experience and uh, 
we're going to actually get to some 3 d So I'm going to take the Watkins Glen GP track. I've already done a test on it. And I will take this wonderful car here, the Formula A, which is a car I know very little about. Never seen a race with it, but I've been practicing with it a little bit so far. i got about an hour of lapping with it. And uh, I've enjoyed it a lot. It feels, well, it's a formula, right? So it feels very jumpy and very bouncy and the braking is uh, lightning responsive i mean the second you hit those brakes the car slow down it's really really a powerful machine so oh yeah and the down downforce obviously sometimes you know you're coming into a turn and you think you're going too fast and you start turning and you're like holy crap it's still holding <laughs> where is this thing getting its grip so yeah it's very formula let's just put it that way and let's get started shall we um, so the load screens are really not that bad. Uh, I've seen worse. I think R Factor was the worst than that. And um, well, uh, I, you know what? Uh, for the sake of comparisons, I'm not even gonna get into R Factor. I'm actually gonna be doing a lot of comparisons to iRacing, of course, because it's the one that I've lately been using the most, obviously. So it's a good point of reference for me. So right off the bat, if I want to make a comparison to iRacing, the performance is definitely not there. Uh, now, I had heard, I was ready for this when I bought the sim because I had heard a lot about very poor performance in VR. However, uh, here's the surprise. I expected worse. I actually expected worse than this. Uh, the last recording I did, checking the frame rate, I saw it range around 45 to 55 frames per second. Now that's while capturing. Uh, of course, the oxymoron here is that if I want to record the frame rate that I'm getting, I have to actually record the video of the game. So I right now can't look at the frame rate while I'm driving. So I can't tell you when it's not recording what it is, but it's probably higher by about 10 frames per second. Uh, an another issue that I could say I had with the the sim right out of the box is the volume. It is much too loud. I actually had to twice. I I mean, I, I, like I just stopped the car dead in its tracks and reached for the volume knob on my sound system. I even lowered the volume in the menu in the sim's menu and. Like, I'm down to 60% on the master volume, and even that didn't help. So, um, something weird over there going on with their volume setting. Oops. Use that second gear there. A little weird. Don't want to hit that inside bumper. Ooh. I'm trying to talk at the same time as I'm doing a fast lap. Kind of difficult. Um, so, put aside the performance issue that I've now pretty much detailed. I mean, to tell you the frame rate it's running at, I did lower a few of the effects because I found that the game was struggling even more in areas with lots, lots of objects like the fences, the people, the trucks, all the little buildings. Uh, there's, there's some sort of effect that I turned off. I turned off a few, I don't know which one was causing it. There's an effect on those particular assets that seems to be very costly in frame rate. And that really helped. Right now it's, I think, sinking at half rate, so it's 45 or something. And uh, sometimes it goes just a little bit above because there's much less objects in view. Uh, if there's an option to turn off a lot of these objects, I really wouldn't mind the change in scenery if it's going to give me 10 15 frames per second more but now here's let's get to some positive here uh this is a pretty good racing simulation i gotta give it to them uh for what it has to be this is pretty good the only reason why i'd say it may be inferior to iRacing in terms of driving is for two reasons obviously iRacing with the price they charge, they can afford to go laser scan the track. So that changes things a lot, but that's just one element. The other element is performance. Uh, the performance directly affects your simulation quality because while your system is delivering images one by one to the device you're using, right now my Oculus Rift or monitor or whatever, um, 
It's also, at that moment, doing all the calculations, the physics, and all that shit. And unless it's a special sim that does that separately, um, the number of times per second that everything is recalculated in terms of physics will equal your frame rate. So, the lower the frame rate, the less accurate the calculations. And that really becomes important with uh, driving simulations. And that's why you'll see a lot of high-end sims, quote-unquote, um, go for less on the graphics, but more on the accuracy. And that really requires performance. So, obviously, right off the bat, Project Car sort of hurts itself in that respect. But I gotta admit, it looks gorgeous. Uh, it, it definitely is more graphically capable than iRacing. I'll definitely give it that, and it destroys iRacing when it comes to particles, actually. When it gets to particles like rain and smoke, it really, really blows it out of the water. Uh, so there's that. Uh, the fact that, that this is really next-gen graphics, that's really good. But obviously it drills down to its main weakness, which is performance, at least for VR. I don't know on screens, can't speak for screens, but in VR, it could use a few more frames. As for realism, when it's running right, uh, it feels really cool. It, this is a very good experience. I know this track from iRacing, and they had very little adjustments to make to my driving other than learning this car, which I don't know at all, and I find quite awesome, by the way. So, um... Uh, aside from that, I mean, no bad surprises, no like, if, I once tried Formula, Tw Formula 1 2012 and it was highly disappointing. That shit was not realistic. You're doing a ragged lap, a really dirty ass crappy lap, and then you see the time come up. <laughs> it's like a record time and you're like, okay, this thing's a clown. This thing's a freaking clown. And this is not the case, this is really not the case. Uh, in fact, if I want to bring R-Factor in the mix, look, it's been a really long time I haven't used R-Factor, so take this with a grain of salt, but this is better than R-Factor. It's definitely better than R-Factor. Why? Because I would say R-Factor really wasn't that hot on the driving to begin with. Uh, R-Factor is kind of your like Microsoft Flight Sim of racing sims, because you can really plug in a whole bunch of cars and tracks whichever way you want. There's no, like, control over that, really. Uh, but, uh, the physics are wonky and, and there's so many weird things about it. it. The driving really isn't that bad at all. I'm not gonna go and say that Art Factor is bad. I'm gonna go and say that it is what it is, pretty much. Uh, it's an okay sim. I've had fun with it. I'm never gonna deny that. I've had a lot of fun with Art Factor. So if you want, if you're looking for something fun to do, our factor won't like upset you or anything. But uh, it, it never got really up to insane performances. Neither did it ever get to have insane graphics. Even the 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 more recent version they have doesn't, doesn't look this good. Uh, so, so I would actually put this one above our factor. Uh, also for its availability, uh, availability. Uh, Ooh. This is available on console, this is available on PC, this runs in VR, so the more inclusive you are, the more people you'll have using your game and or simulator, right? And that's a very good thing. I'm thinking of getting my nephew this simulator, he has a PS4, and guess what? It's available for the PS4, and it'll be one of the first times that uh, my nephew has a game that I also have and we can actually talk about our experiences together in our respective simulators. I even got him a Thrustmaster racing wheel so that he has fun with that. Uh, oh! Alright, I expected a harder crash than that, but I was at the beginning of the uphill. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and park the I guess that's my cue to go ahead and park the car. What's my time here? 127.627. Ordinary. I think it did faster earlier. Um, ordinary. I was talking the whole time. I didn't actually try to get to a fast lap, and now I believe I've destroyed the car. Uh, I'm going to actually get myself ready to do a little solo race, because one thing that iRacing doesn't have that 
Uh, it's made me a little lonely on the lapping side is the fact that it doesn't have any AI. So you can't really practice race, you have to go out there in the wild, and the drivers are pretty damn good, so you've got to be in, in good driving shape. And uh, this has AI, so this I will probably appreciate, I'll probably use it mostly to race with AI, and get a little experience and confidence built up so that I can then actually go and race in iRacing with people. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's do, let's do a quick one. Let's go, uh, let's go try a solo race here. Uh, having a lot of fun. When you hear me go silent in a racing simulator, it means that I'm actually having brakes. fun. It's and there we go, there the goes my brakes. So I did three fast laps there, forget it. Uh, this is something you can't do during a race, by the way, drive like that, because the, the, the brakes will last you two, three laps, so you'll go faster than you would in a race. Now, let's see what I did here. Let's see what I did. There we go, 125.4, much better, two seconds faster than what I was doing while I was talking. Uh, before I go on, I'm going to make a note, uh, I am not using my SLI setup, I forgot to mention this. When I activated uh, SLI, the game in VR would flicker not just out of one eye, but out of both eyes every single frame, and it was running at the same frame rate. So I think there's a problem there. I I don't know if this is something they know of, but yeah, that wasn't working. So I'm only using one of my two GTX 970s right now. And I, uh, between sessions now, I, I sort of turned off the game and I did a clean boot to have a little bit better performance. And I also turned on the overclocking of my card. See if that brings it up. I'll only know after the recording. In fact, let me make sure I am recording. Only I know after the recording if it's having any effect. If you see the thing, going above 55, then it did its work. 
Alright, so here goes nothing, and I struggle with standing starts, so... Wish me luck. This is pretty exciting. Not bad! Wow! That uh, was exhausting. Where am I? Um, fifth. Okay, not too bad. Five seconds away from the leader. Is that what it says? One, one, one. Oh, so that was a leading group right uh, Okay, so I basically kept up with everybody. It shot a pretty bad start. Uh, I still struggle with those damn starts. And then, obviously, because you get into a scuffle, you get fucking caught up in the action the first few laps. Uh, it was really hard to juggle there. I think my pass on that sixth guy was pretty awesome. And I thought he was in my bumper, but it turns out I was three seconds behind me. A oh, whole bunch of camera options. There we go. Oh, yuck. They're using camera orbit in VR. And this is a lot like iRacing here. So that there's no camera orbit here, but the camera does pan. Um, wow. That really does look like Watkins Glen. I'll give it that uh, to Project Cards because of its uh, graphical fidelity. Oh, wow, the guy was going off on the grass there and shit. 
because of the graphical fidelity, uh, the replays look awesome, obviously. Uh, but I'm getting pretty poor frame rate here and there. I, I can feel the jitter when I move my head especially. That's where you'll mostly notice. There we go. I was trying to chop that guy off because I knew he wasn't fast enough. And he kept trying to get back at me. Dude, you're slower. Get the fuck out of my way. I fucked up my start. I need to catch up here. This is pretty hard to do. The other guy was actually much harder to pass. Although it might have looked like I did it quicker. The other guy was much harder to pass. Let me see this. I oh, Christ. Oh, shit. I thought he's the one who had bumped behind me, but what? Oh, fuck. Now, my only complaint with the AI, I tried this earlier with a larger field, with more cars on the track, uh, with fewer laps. And you tend to have a sort of... Because it's all basically the same code running the cars, there's probably some variation, obviously, from car to car to make it look like they're all different drivers. But it's not that strong, so you end up with a very... Uh, agglomerated pack. Nobody really falls behind. Unless, I guess unless you turn on a longer race, but after the start it was oddly packed up for the three, four laps that I tried. Uh, I'm, I'm not talking about this race, an earlier one where I did with 19 cars. Uh, it was oddly packed the whole time. Uh, whereas, um, you know, that's the kind of behavior you're gonna see on a novel because Oh, and that's, this is one of the things I wanted to mention. One of the things I find that lacks in this simulator, and I really wish it had it because it has AI and it would be so awesome, is a freaking oval track. Just if, 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 just Indy. Just put, like, Indianapolis on top of that has an actual road course in the middle. So it would make a lot of simmers happy to have the entire facility in this simulator because then you could do some really f screwed up fantasy racing and take Formula Ones and use the AI and go and race on the Indianapolis Oval with... You, you see, you could do a whole bunch of combinations like that. You can already do that with iRacing, but there's no AI, which is where I find this has a plus in that respect. I was worried that the AI would actually tank during this session, demand more, and it did not. So the performance was identical with the AI. There's only six cars, though, so I didn't go with a very large field. But still, uh, even with six cars, I do remember R Factor would perform a little less well. And uh, when you race online with iRacing, obviously, the more there are cars, the lesser the performance will be. Now, it never actually hits a point where it goes under 75, though, if you're not recording. So <laughs> the, it still leads in that respect. Uh, and I would say that for VR, iRacing remains the number one choice, in my opinion. However, if you're not ready for the monthly subscription, look, there's a lot of... There's a lot of negative talk about iRacing that's not necessarily correct. For instance, they say like, they'll make you buy the tracks and the cars. Well, it's the same thing for Project Cars, really, because there's add-on packs. So, it's in that respect, it's no difference. Much less expensive. I'll agree with that. It's much, much, much less expensive. However, uh, the only real core difference here is the monthly subscription, which I will fully agree ends up costing a lot. Unless you get a special or something, I do recommend anyone who owns Project Cars and not iRacing and uses virtual reality to try iRacing for like just a month and just use the default tracks and cars. You probably won't really want to jump on any of the paid for cars unless there's like one in particular you like. And in my case, I really like Indy Motor Speedway, so I got that one. Uh, there's a few tracks like that that I got, so it's, it really depends on your choice, but you can do a lot with what they give you out of the box. When it comes to Project Cars, if you own iRacing and don't have Project Cars, it is something that I recommend adding to your library if you see it on sale. Uh, if you have no simulation experience whatsoever and you own a DK2 and you got a racing wheel, get Project Cars first. Uh, it's much better for entry level uh, because iRacing is more of an investment. So if you want to check if you like racing simulators, you own the hardware and you're not sure yet, Project Cars is a great choice. Um, there's one I'm leaving out here because I've never tried it before and that would be Assetto Corsa. So, um, don't take my full word for it. There's one of the three big ones that I haven't tried and I probably will eventually get to it. I know it's on sale right now. Um, I'll, I'll decide. I might wait till another sale. I'm not sure. 
So thanks for watching Stereo 3D Productions. I hope you enjoyed this video of Project Cars. And, uh, well, that's it. I'm gonna revisit Fly Inside FSX. If I don't do it before New Year's, well, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's. Um, but I may get it done maybe today. I'm not sure. Anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Because it, it definitely warrants a revisiting just like Euro Truck Simulator. All right, so I'll see you folks around. Thanks for watching. Folks, it's time for a little bonus here. Um, a little bonus, because there's another track that I think is really cool here. Uh, I don't know if they put it under M. Yep, Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca, the leg legendary IndyCar track. Now, pretty sure that there are no IndyCars in this simulator. Something I would love to see, but I do find, oddly enough, the Formula A to be very similar. So, I'm gonna go ahead and try to clock a time on it. Feel free to stop watching this video, really. I'm done with the first impressions. Uh, this is just some bonus footage of me going around this track. So, we're gonna call that a warm-up lap and completely forget what just happened. Let's get started with some real lapping. So bonus footage, enjoy people. Gotta watch out with the braking here, holy shit. Damn it! Oh, I'm continuing! Woohoohoo! 